Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. We are on page number 115. Today is our day number 6 on page 115. Please turn to it. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You are going to need this book in order for us to work together. Page number 115. On the very top of it you see an algebra problem. Two algebraic expressions and we are asked to compare them. The first expression goes something like this. x squared plus 1 and column B is 2x minus 1. Now, there are two ways you can tackle this problem. One is what I call the traditional way, the orthodox way, the classical way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the mathematical way, the way you are expected to solve this question, uh, expected that is by these people, expected by whom? By these people here, the ETS people who give you the exam. And the second method is what I call the quick and dirty way. The quick and dirty way is where you just plug in some numbers and see what happens. Forget the algebra, just plug in some numbers and see what happens. Which way should we do first? Let's do quick and dirty way first, okay? Let's plug in. Let's plug in x equal to 2. Let's plug in x equal to 2, see what happens. If x, if x were 2, if x were 2, not was, if x were 2, why were, not, why not was? Because one is speaking hypothetically. I'm making a hypothetical statement. We do not know what the value of x is, so if x were 2, x squared would have been 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. And this would be x 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. 5 is more than 3, the answer in this case is A. Now, you have solved, you have, you have plugged in a nice whole positive numbers, now it is time to do something wild, something weird, something crazy, something out of the ordinary. And this is how you do it. When you're plugging in, when you're plugging in on the GRE, listen very carefully on the on the quantitative comparison question. I just erased it here. It, it was saying quantitative comparison, which is what these questions are called. These questions are called quantitative comparison because you are given two quantities and you're being asked to compare them. Hence, quantitative comparison. When you do plugging in technique on the quantitative comparison question, it's always a good idea to first time first time around to plug in some nice whole positive number and the second time around do something wild. What I mean by do something wild is this. There are two kinds of numbers. As far as the GRE is concerned, as far as the GRE is concerned, there are two kinds of numbers uh, that, uh, that we are dealing with. One is what I call the nice numbers. And others are what we call nasty numbers. They come in two flavors. The numbers come in two flavors. Just like in our younger days, uh, in our school school days, we talked about positive numbers and whole numbers and prime numbers and odd numbers and even numbers or rational numbers and irrational numbers and a whole bunch of other numbers. Similarly, as far as the GRE is concerned, the numbers come in two flavors. Nasty and nice. Nice numbers of any whole, any whole positive number. The nasty numbers are zero, one, negatives, and fractions. Notice one. One is an exception. Even though one is a one is a whole positive number, one is a whole number, it's a positive number, but it's considered a nasty number. It's nasty because nothing happens to the bloody thing. If you have, for example, here x squared, you want to plug in numbers that that uh, that uh, that evolves with the problem. So if I, if you plug in two, x squared is four. But if you were to plug in 1, something weird would happen. 1 squared will remain 1. It's a weird number. It's a nasty number. It behaves in an unpredictable manner. 5, uh, 10 divided by 10 divided by x. If x happens to be 2, then it will evolve. It will be 10 divided by 2, which is 5. But if x were 1, again, you see, if x were 1, 
nothing would happen to 10. It would remain 10. It behaves in a very strange way. 1 is a nasty number. So let's, let's do that. Let's plug in some nasty numbers. Let's plug in x equal to 1. Always go in this order. Don't waste it. Well, I, I just told you always go in this order. I'm, I'm, I'm contradicting myself. Always go in this order here. Plug in 0 first, then a positive 1, then some negative numbers, and then some fractions. And if the answer does not change, if the answer does not change after trying all of these scenarios, if it stays the same, then it's a very high chance that that is the answer. There is no guarantee. In the plugging in technique, there is no guarantee because you may have left out some scenario where the answer might change. Because here, when we pick an answer choice, what does it mean here when you pick an answer choice A? In a quantitative comparison question, when you pick answer choice A, what is it that you're claiming? When we pick an answer choice A for quantitative comparison question, what we're claiming is that the quantity in column A is always greater. Always, always, always greater. When we pick B for the answer choice, what we're claiming is that the quantity in the second column is always great, uh, greater. And when we pick C for the answer choice, what we're claiming is that the two quantities are always, always, always equal. And, and, and in order for that to be true, we have to contemplate all different scenarios. And if you miss one out, then, then there's a problem. The answer might change, and then you might end up picking A, but the answer might be D. But that's okay. As long as you try two or three different times and the answer does not change, there's a very good chance that that's the answer. So let's just see what happens. Let's plug in x equal to 0. If x were 0, 0 squared is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. If x were 0, 0 is uh, a 0, 0 times 2 is a 0, minus 1, negative 1. You see positive 1 here, negative 1 here, the answer is A. Because the answer did not change, we got A the first time, the A got second time. At this point, it is your call. If you are in the mood and if you have the time, plug in one more time. I always plug in the third time. It only takes a few seconds. The reason why it's taking so long right now in the video is because I'm explaining every single excruciating detail. But of course, once you get to know it, you just do it on your own. It only takes seconds to plug in 0 or 1 or negative number. So we tried 0. Let's try 1 x squared is 1, 1 plus 1 squared plus 1 is 2, and here 2 times 2 times 1 minus 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, answer again is A, you see, answer did not change. I'm going to try it one more time just to be on the safe side, forget the negative, let's, just, let's try fraction, see what happens. Let's plug in, let's plug in half. If x were half, half squared is 1 quarter, half squared is 1 quarter, plus 1, 1 quarter plus 1 is 1 and 1 quarter, and here in this column we get 2 times half, 2 times half, well 2 halves make 1, 2 times half is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, as again you see 0 is less than 1 and 1 quarter, the answer is A. Because of the fact that the answer does not change in the different scenarios, we plug in a nice number, we plug in some nasty number, answer did not change, therefore it's very likely it's highly likely that the answer is in fact A. That's it, we're done. Okay. As, again, as I said, uh, it seems like it took a long time, but because I was explaining everything, I'm going to do it one more time, see how quickly it goes. It does not take that long, trust me. It takes a few seconds to plug in these numbers. When you plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5, and 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, 5 is more than 3, we're done. Plug in 0, that's 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, that's 0, minus 1, Plus one is negative. This is positive one is greater than negative one. The answer is A. When we plug in x equal to one, one squared is one plus one is two. Two times one is two. Two minus one is one. This is greater. You see, it only takes few seconds and so forth. Now I'm going to read the problem. We're going to read the problem you and I in the very classical way for those of you who can. For those of you who can. You see, I, I paused in my sentence because uh, I'm going to use a set word here just now. The word I was going to use was brook. For those of you who can brook it. And again, if you do not know what brook means, then what I want you to do is, well, right now what I want you to do is wait for me for about 10 seconds. I'll be right back. I'm back. Just like right now you are watching some math videos with me, similarly I have put together some vocabulary videos. 
In the English portion of the exam, whether you're taking the SAT or the GRE or the GMAT, the English portion of the exam, the most crucial component over there is having a decent vocabulary. And for that reason, I put together some videos to help you improve your vocabulary. The word that I used just now was broke. What I want you to do is just type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day four. Or even if you don't type in Keshwani prep, if you just search for this tag, just type in vocab dash day four and learn this word. I will not tell you what that word means. I want, I'm going to arouse your curiosity right now. Uh, learn, look, watch this video and learn what that means. So for those of you who can brook it, I'm going to do the exact same problem in a classical manner. And classical manner, and classical manner, as I just said, is simply an euphemism. euphemism for geeky and nerdy way. It's just a euphemistic way of saying, so I'm going to do it in a geeky way. Let's see when did we learn this word. Just give me one second please. I'm curious, I know we learned it. Etymology. Oh there you go, day number nine. Euphemism, that's an M. Day number nine, same thing, just type in Kashmani prep dash vocab dash day nine, that's what the nine is for, and you will learn the word euphemism. So you have to put it euphemistically, we're gonna do it in a classical way, or to put it more bluntly, we're gonna do it in a nerdy way. There we go. X squared plus one, two x minus one. Subtract two x from both sides. Subtract two x from both sides. Now when I say both sides, I meant the both columns. If you subtract 2x from both columns, I shouldn't have put this continuous line because I don't want you to freak out. This has nothing to do with this part. That's, 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 your, that's your column A and that's your column B. So if you subtract 2x from this side here, this you've got positive 2x, you've got negative 2x, they cancel out and here we end up with negative 1. And here we end up with x squared minus 2x plus 1. x squared minus 2x plus 1, this is where the nerdy part comes into it, this is where the nerdy genes come into play, is same as x squared minus 2 times x times 1 plus 1 squared, which of course is same as a squared minus 2ab two 2ab plus b squared. Your B here is 1, our B is 1, and our A is X. A squared minus 2AB plus B squared is simply A minus B whole squared. Since our A is X and our B is 1, so it's X minus 1 whole squared. X minus 1 whole squared, and on this side we have negative 1. Now what we notice here is that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. Now we can see immediately without actually having to try four or five different times plugging in different things here. That's the advantage of classical way because you can see things in abstract manner instead of having to do it out manually. Here we can see that it doesn't matter what x is going to be. Whether x is going to be positive number or whole number or negative number or fractions or whatever it's going to be. Whatever the x happens to be, minus one, even if it turns out to be a negative quantity, x minus one, even if it turns out to be a negative quantity, any quantity raised to an even power, let me put it here. Any quantity raised to an even power is always positive. Notice what we said here. We said even power. It doesn't even have to be two. Even if it were one x minus one to raised to four or x minus one raised to six or eight or ten or negative two, it doesn't matter. As long as it's an even power, it will be a positive quantity. Here we have x minus 1 raised to second power. It's a positive quantity. This is a, something positive. This is some, something positive. 
ST stands for something. Something. Something positive is always going to be more than negative 1. Something positive is always going to be more than negative 1. And therefore the answer is A. Voila. That's it. We're done. So that was the classical way. For those of you who can group the algebra. I will see you tomorrow on day number 7. Where we're going to, where we're going to continue with the same page. There is one more problem at the bottom of the page. I don't want to do it right now because otherwise the video will be too long. Because as you, as you notice by now, uh, I have a tendency of explaining too much. So the videos tend to be a little bit long. I don't want to start the second problem right now. We'll do it tomorrow on day number 7. The problem that you see on the same page, on page number 115 at the bottom of the page there. But the goal, the idea is to do every single math problem that we can find. Every single one of them in this book. Every single one. It will take me a few months, but we'll get there. I'll see you tomorrow, alright? Thank you.